hi guys welcome back today we are going to be treating thermochemistry thermochemistry is a branch of physical chemistry that deals with thermal or heat changes caused by chemical reactions now it is believed that every substance has a definite amount of energy called the internal energy except that it cannot be accurately calculated but the change in this energy can be measured which we you know as delta e and a very good example is a chemical reaction the change in energy of a chemical reaction is the amount of heat the reaction gives off or takes in to form its product and is represented as delta e and delta e is the energy of the product minus the energy of the reactants enthalpy is represented as h enthalpy is the same as the internal energy of a system Except that you have to add the product of its pressure and volume, and the simple formula is H equals to E plus PV, that is enthalpy equals to internal energy plus the product of the pressure and the volume of that system. That means that change in enthalpy of a system is also del change delta H equals to HP minus HR, that is the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. Now let's go to the possible type of thermic reactions we can have in a chemical reaction. So we can have the endothermic and we have the exothermic. Now if the reactants requires heat to form products, then it is called endothermic reaction. And if the reactant gives off heat in order to form its products, then it is called exothermic reaction. And let's know that this energy that is given off or taken in can be measured in joules or calories. And note that 1 calorie equals 4.18 joules. Now let's talk of endothermic reaction. If the reactant requires heat to form products, then it is called endothermic reactions, right? It means that heat required for the products to be formed is greater than the sum of heat in the reactants. Thus, the enthalpy of the system is positive, meaning the heat of the product is greater than the heat of the reactant, isn't it? So that means the delta H equals to HP minus HR. And by the time, because for the fact that the heat in the product is greater than that of the reactant, that means the result should be positive, right? For mathematics. Now, exothermic reaction. If the reactant gives off heat to form products, then it is called exothermic reaction. This means that heat required for the product to be formed is less than the sum of the heats in the reactant. This will result in the system giving off heat in order to reach product. Thus, the enthalpy of the system is negative. That meaning that the enthalpy in the product is less than that of the reactant. So, Delta H equals to HP minus HR from what we know and that means it has to be negative because HP is less than HR. Then we can say that the heat of a reaction, also called enthalpy of a reaction, is the amount of heat absorbed or evolved in a chemical reaction when the reactants change completely into products. It means environmental temperature can affect chemical reaction. Right, since we know that it's heat, it is required or it is absorbed or given off for a reactant to form products. That means if there is heat in the environment already, it might somehow somehow affect the chemical reaction. Right? And if you have noticed in hot season, if you keep your rice for too long in pot, it might quickly get spoiled. <laughs> right? I would never forget this because I've been victim of this many times back then in school. So to account for the change in enthalpy as a result of change in temperature or pressure, we have to know some formulas. So these formulas, we have to know them. Let's, let's keep them in our minds. But this formula is on the assumption that the volume remains constant. The next one that we know of again is the delta H, which is enthalpy. Delta H equals to HP minus HR, that is the enthalpy in the product minus that of the reactants. In order for us to account for when some other enthalpies are disturbing the that of the system, they are currently working, maybe the environmental enthalpies, 
is affecting that of the system then you have to put this into consideration this formula delta h2 minus delta h1 equals to delta its capacities but in terms of pressure now open bracket t2 minus t1 just like i said just know the formulas you do not need to know how it came to be but this is on the assumption that pressure remains constant so now let's try some examples the rate of the reaction in the formation of chlorine according to this equation is at at 27 degrees celsius is minus 22.1 kilocalories now calculate the heat of reaction at 77 degrees celsius the molar heat capacities at constant pressure at 27 degrees celsius for hydrogen chlorine and hydrogen chloride gas are this 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 and this kilo Cal calories per mole respectively now we can see that from this question we have we have the heat of reaction at 27 degrees celsius but somehow somehow something something happened and the heat of reaction is now at 77 degrees celsius so there must have been another enthalpy or there must have been another heat from somewhere that caused the reaction to go to 77 degrees celsius so we have to account for that now the, the question now is calculate the heat of reaction at 77 degrees celsius now the new heat is what we want to calculate so that means that means we are using this formula and while we're using this formula it says here that on the assumption that at constant pressure they said at constant pressure you can see that at constant pressure is there so it's on the assumption that pressure is constant here so we are using this formula Whether it was volume constant then we would use the other one now delta h1 we already know it from the equation that it is minus 22 minus 22 kilocalories and then t2 minus t1 just subtract the values in kelvin it is still going to be the same thing as what you get from this it will still be 50 if you convert to kelvin and subtract still the same thing yeah it must just be in kelvin so it is 50 it is going to be 50 kelvin in the end it's going to be 50 kelvin in the end now the heat change in its capacities change in its capacity is going to be the capacity its capacity of the product minus the heat capacity of the reactant in terms of their pressure that's exactly what we have written here change in its capacity should be its capacity of the product and the product in this case is hydrogen chloride gas minus the heat capacity of the reactant and the reactant in this case is what you have here except that you are going to account for the number of moles is accounting for the number of moles half half we just apply their capacities as it's given in the book then we have 0.4 calories per mole now all you have to do left is fix everything into the equation and then you find the new energy which is delta h2 and you are good to go now you can try this s's law s's law if a chemical change can be made to take place in two or more different ways whether in one two or more steps the amount of total heat change is the same no matter by which method the change is brought about okay i i know i know i know that it is very confusing let's just explain it in a simpler term okay if you want to go from a point a to a point b and you're not sure how to go about it but you know a way that leads from point a to point c and from point c to point d and from d it leads to b then you can also follow that path you still reach b in the end right now this is a question let's calculate delta h for the reaction this reaction here co2 plus h2 produces co plus h2o we want to know the delta h but we do not have um, instruments to calculate it but but from our basic from the knowledge of what we know already we know that co2 has an enthalpy of minus 393.5 co has an enthalpy of minus 111.31 and h2 has an enthalpy of minus 241.80 kilojoules per mole now since we already have the idea of this then we can just use what we have here to get what we want let's break it down first let's break it down first co2 the formation of co2 
that's c plus o2 equals to co2 that is the heat energy required that's equation one the formation of co that is c plus half o2 then gives co that's the heat energy required and the formation of water that's the heat energy required right then obtain the required equation by equating in this way equation 2 plus equation 3 minus equation 1 then you get the answer <laughs> I, I know i know i've performed the magic i know but let's break it down but let's break it down now this is what we are trying to achieve right we want to know the heat required to form this we, we already know that co2 this is heat energy required but if you look at see this let's even let's first take this equation one if you look at this equation one you see that co2 looks somewhat like what we are trying to achieve right except that co2 is on the right side here but co2 is on the left side of what we are trying to achieve so let's swap it let's swap the equation let's turn it around then we have this that is this equation one we've swapped it the product is now the reactant reactant is now the product as you can see but because we swapped it it means the heat the enthalpy of the system has to swap as well so it now becomes positive you get okay now it becomes positive let's see equation two now if you look at equation two as well yeah it looks somewhat like what we want to achieve and if co is on the right of this equation to co is on the right of what we are trying to achieve so let's leave that that way and let's check the last equation it still looks somewhat like what we want to achieve h2o is on the right of what we want to achieve and h2o is on the right of equation three so now we can see that by the time we sum up all this equation we bring all the left, left hand sides together we bring all the right hand sides together then we have this c we cancel out c because it's on both sides now you see that there's half half o2 half o2 on this left hand let's bring it together to form full o2 you get one o2 now one o2 is on both sides they will cancel out they will cancel out if, if you now see it has given us exactly what we're trying to find right from the beginning right all we just have to do is add up the heat energies in that format then at the end you get the same answer let's try another question determine the heat of reaction for this 4 nh3 ammonia plus 5o2 produces 4no plus 6h2o using this following set of reactions what you are going to be doing is majorly obj right cbt so let's know how to solve this putting less possible words on paper now this is the equation that we are trying to achieve if you look at the equation we are trying to achieve and you look at these smaller smaller equations that were given to achieve it ammonia nh3 has four molecules in the original equation that we are trying to achieve and it is on the left hand side now if you look at equation 2 it has two molecules of ammonia and it is on the right hand side so it means we have to swap equation 2 first such that the product now becomes the reactant reactant now becomes the product and not only that we have to multiply through by 2 the essence of multiplying through by 2 is such that it can balance up to form what we are trying to achieve which is 4 ammonia and this one is 2 ammonia so we have to multiply through by 2 so then it means that multiplying through by 2 has to affect the heat of reaction the enthalpy you understand so now the enthalpy will no longer be minus 91.8 it becomes plus 91.8 nan times 2 i hope we got that okay now if we look again at the equation we are trying to achieve no has four molecules right and it's on the right hand side let's check equation one here no has two molecules it's on the right hand on both places but so that place that one is okay we don't need to reverse it but we have to multiply through by two in order to balance what we want so multiplying two by two, multiplying through by two to make it four it means the heat of reaction the enthalpy has to be multiplied by two as well so that one two multiplied by two okay now let's go to the final one h2o h2 h2o in the reaction that we're trying to achieve is six but h2o in equation three is two 
two molecules so we have to multiply through by three right good doing that now if you look very well you will see that it will balance up in the end now in the sense that equation one now has two n right equation one now becomes two n two two o two equals to four n o right equation two now becomes four n h three produces n two n two plus six h two right now equation three now becomes six h two plus three o two produces six h two o right you see that it will balance up i know i've confused you with everything i've said but i i'm i'm, I'm solving it in my head as i'm doing it so you guys need to also learn that but it has balanced up if it is confusing you write everything on paper you see that it has balanced up cancel out everything in the end you have the reaction they are looking for so now what we have achieved now is the only sense is that now we know how to add up the enthalpies you don't really need to know all those cancelling cancelling cancels it's not part of what we need we just need to know how to add up all the enthalpies to get what we want so adding up all the enthalpies know that now it is 2 times 180.6 plus 2 times 91.8 plus 3 times minus 4 483.7 that's exactly what we are trying to achieve with the whole checking through the equations so now to determine the heat of the reaction then that is what you use and you get the answer which is as simple as abc well, this brings us to the end of this i hope it has been very nice we're going to continue with rate of reaction in our next video enjoy peace